Heather Rich was just 16 years old, a bright and lively teenager growing up in a small town in Oklahoma. Like many teens, she had her share of ups and downs, but was generally known for her warm personality and kind heart. However, her life was tragically cut short by three young men. On the evening of October 2, 1996, Heather quietly slipped out of her home to meet Joshua Bagwell, a 17-year-old senior from a rich family she knew from school. Joshua was with his friends, Curtis Gamble, a high school dropout, and Randy Wood, a future homecoming king, at a trailer parked behind his grandfather's house. The group had been drinking heavily, and when Heather arrived, she joined them. The night started off as a typical gathering of teens, but things quickly took a dark turn. As the alcohol flowed, the situation grew more intense. Curtis and Randy left for a short time, and when they returned, they found Heather and Joshua in a vulnerable state. The group's behavior became more erratic. Encouraged by the atmosphere and their impaired judgment, the boys crossed a line, leading to Heather being assaulted. The gravity of the situation soon became clear, and as Heather began to regain awareness, the group's fear of the consequences drove them to take even more drastic actions. The group piled into a vehicle with Heather and began driving aimlessly through southern Oklahoma, trying to figure out what to do next. They considered several locations but ultimately decided on a remote area near the Texas border, believing it would be difficult to trace back to them. After some time, they arrived at a bridge over Belknap Creek, a secluded spot where they thought they could carry out their plan without being noticed. In a moment of fear and confusion, Curtis Gamble took a shotgun and, with the others watching, made the tragic decision to end Heather's life. After the fatal shots, they tied a heavy weight to her body, hoping it would sink and remain hidden. They then threw her into the creek, believing that the water would conceal the evidence of their actions. This desperate attempt to cover up their crime would only delay the inevitable discovery of Heather's body and the truth behind her tragic death. On October 10, 1996, about a week after Heather went missing, a rancher made a grim discovery while checking his land near Belknap Creek. He found a body in the water, and authorities were quickly called to the scene. The body had no face which caused several officers on site to become very sick. However, a gold ring on her hand provided the clue that it was Heather Rich. To confirm the identity, investigators compared dental records, which tragically confirmed what Heather's family had feared. It was indeed Heather Rich, and the discovery sent shockwaves through the community. I don't remember a lot after that I went into shock. I remember screaming, beating on everybody that was close enough to me, and um, just trying to accept accepted that she was dead, she wasn't coming home. The hunt for those responsible for this terrible act began in earnest. Massive investigation followed involving law enforcement agencies from Montague County, Jefferson County, the FBI, and the Texas Rangers. Within two weeks, forensic evidence linked both Joshua Bagwell and Curtis Gamble to the weapon used in the crime. Following their arrests on October 24th, Curtis and Randy provided conflicting stories about what happened to Heather, while Bagwell chose to remain silent, invoking his right to avoid self-incrimination. The Montague County District Attorney initially put Curtis Gambill on trial, offering him a deal to avoid the death penalty in exchange for admitting to being the shooter and testifying against Joshua Bagwell, who had strong legal defense. However, during Bagwell's trial, Gamble broke his plea agreement, shifting the blame to Randy Wood. Randy didn't add up. Randy still went to school. Randy played football. Uh, Randy wasn't, quote unquote, what we would consider a killer at the time. This led Wood to abandon his own plea deal and testify against Bagwell, risking a death sentence to ensure his testimony wasn't seen as biased. His own lawyer was saying, hey, hey guy, this, this is crazy. I mean, it's noble. It's very noble what you're doing. But from a legal standpoint, man, you're crazy to do this. You could wind up on death row. Bagwell was ultimately convicted, and when Wood faced his trial, he too was found guilty. Curtis Gamble received a life sentence with a minimum of 30 years before he could be considered for parole. Joshua Bagwell was sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole, plus an additional 99 years. His conviction included charges of capital murder and conspiracy to commit murder, and Randy Wood was given a life sentence for capital murder. If you found this video interesting, you should also check the bizarre case of Diane Downs, and don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Goodbye.